Hi, I'm Drew, and I'm an amateur model builder. I'm building a layout in my basement called the White River Line, inspired by the Frisco Railroad in the Ozarks. In this episode, I'm going to be working on this Walther's Merchant Row Kit. This is going to be placed in the downtown business district on my land. It's been quite a while since I've built one of these styrene kits. The last one was probably about 18 years ago, an Atlas Passenger Depot. I've never really worked on brickwork before, so that should be a learning experience and uh, should be a lot of fun. So let's jump into it. As usual, I spent a little time with the instructions. They're very uh, concise. I also spent some time checking out all the parts. They'll need a little bit of cleanup. One of the first decisions I have to make is what parts I want to remove from the sprues and which I want to keep connected for priming and painting. Keeping them connected often makes it easier to airbrush them. However, if the place where the sprue is connected will be visible in the final assembly, I'll have to spend some extra time to touch up the paint later on. I removed the larger parts from the sprues and kept the smaller ones attached, with the exception of the front doors, the cornice, and the chimneys. I filed away the bits of the remaining sprues and trimmed off the flashing. Some of these parts required more attention than others. I also spent some time using my awl to make cracks in the sidewalk and to distress the window sills and brick. I washed the parts in mild soapy water and allowed them to dry. Then I applied primer and let it cure overnight. Starting with the roof, I airbrushed it dark gray. I then applied a light mist of this Mission Tire Black. I haven't used Mission Paints before, but my local hobby shop didn't have any blacks available of my preferred brand, Vallejo. Next, I applied a light mist of Vallejo White Gray. Finally, I dry brushed the roof with Dark Earth. For now, that's all I'm going to do. I'll add some other effects once it is assembled. I want to be able to visualize the piece in place as I add these other effects. I started on the sidewalk next. My first step was airbrushing with concrete from Vallejo. Once it dried, I realized that it was too dark. I added a light wash to lighten it up. I then added a dark wash to emphasize the cracks in the edges of the sidewalk. Well, now it's too dark again. I added another light wash. But now it just looks all muddy. Next, I added a light mist of sand to lighten it up and add a little more color back into it. Finally, I added a dark wash of Russian Air Force dark green and dark gray. Here's the final result. It still might be a little too dark, but I'm more or less happy with it. Turning to the brickwork. I started by airbrushing it with a mix of burnt red and Russian Air Force dark green. It was a little bit too maroon, so I added some orange rust, too. The 
The color is a bit dark, but that should be remedied down the road. I did a little bit of sponge painting with orange rust and dark rust to add a little variety in the colors of the brick. For the mortar I used a mix of off-white and some concrete. I watered it down a lot. A lot. I'm not happy with this. It is kind of splotchy and it lightened up the brick too much. While I figure out what I'm going to do, I'll start painting some details, starting with the cornice for this store on the left, a hardware store. I'm using buff as the main color and red as the highlight color for this store. Taking another look at the brick, I think it's going to be fine. I definitely want to rethink my approach for my next piece with brickwork, but I'm okay with this for now. Moving on to more detail work. The store in the middle will be a paint store. I'm using gray, green, and blue. The store on the right will be a bicycle shop. I'm using off-white and part green. Painting fine detail like this can be tedious and at times frustrating and anxious. However, once I get into the flow, I find it meditative and I want to provide some tips that might help you turn fine detail work like this into a rewarding part of your model. First, brushes. Invest in high quality brushes and take care of them. I find I rely on this 15 aught brush quite a bit and I've used it for several years. This single aught brush is a nice companion, but it is starting to get a little frayed. I quite like this 5 aught brush as well. Its short handle makes it a bit more agile, but also less steady in my hand. I picked up this set of brushes a while back but I have found that in many cases the bristles are just too long. Take care of your brushes. Clean them immediately after use and store them upright to preserve the integrity of the bristles. Second, paint viscosity. I almost always water down my paints to a good flowing consistency. I generally just wet the brush and mix it with the paint to a consistency that feels right. A little practice is all you'll need. Too thick and the paint won't flow in the corners and will leave a ragged edge. Too thin and it won't stay where you want it, flowing into cracks and crevices. Worse, you'll increase the likelihood of needing a second coat and increase the odds of making a mistake. Third, load your brush properly. After mixing my paint to a proper consistency, I clean the bristles and the ferrule on a paper towel to make sure no errant paint goes where I don't want it to. If you've got too much paint on your brush, you'll run the risk of accidentally getting paint where you don't want it. If there's too little paint on your brush, you'll need to use more force to get it to where you want to go. 
Too much force means you're more likely to color outside the lines. Fourth, steady your work, steady your hand. Rest the work on your work surface and rest your hand there as well. Your hand and the work will move in unison. At times, you won't be able to keep your hand on the work surface. In that case, keep part of the piece of the work on the work surface and rest part of your hand on the work. Even just placing your pinky finger on the work helps to keep your hand in unison with the work. Fifth, angle of attack. Come at your work from an angle where it is easy to get to where you want to go and harder to go where you don't want to. I constantly move the work around to ensure that my hand is in a natural and easy position. I move the work around my hand. I don't move my hand around the work. Sixth, and finally, accept that mistakes happen and you'll need to touch up. It's generally easier to cover up a dark color over a light color. Therefore, I start with a lighter color and don't mind if I'm a little sloppier. When I apply the dark color, I can cover up my sloppiness. Okay, one more. Get one of these magnifying lamps. It does help you paint more precisely. Also, if the work looks decent under magnification, it's going to look better at a normal viewing distance. With the primary details done, I started on the remaining windows and doors. I painted them sky gray. I wanted to keep these simple since I can't imagine the landlord would want to spend money on a bunch of fancy colors. The window sills, the arches above the windows, the thresholds, and caps on the walls probably would have been made of limestone. For this, I used a mix of concrete and off-white. It was probably about 50-50. I assembled the firewalls that would be placed on the roof before I painted these details. This detail painting always takes longer than I remember. All of this represents probably about 12 or more hours of work. Next up will be some assembly and some more weathering, which I'll finish up in my next video. Remember, you can find me on Instagram and Facebook at the links in the description. Please leave me a like. It's the best way that you can help support my work. Thanks for watching, and please join me next time as I continue modeling the White River Line.